So we're on to scenario four now, bodily fluid. Um, how could you measure the volume of blood in the body? Oh, um, I guess you could do it by measuring how long it takes for something to kind of pass through the body. And base, if you know uh, how how much like is filtered by the kidney in a particular amount of time measuring how long it takes for the concentration of a specific substance to kind of decrease by a certain amount um and and doing that by measuring how long it takes to pass through the body will tell you how much it's been dissolved in kind of thing here the candidate talks about how long it takes something to pass through the body and we get a mention of the kidney, we get a mention of things being dissolved in other things. Now this is along the right tracks and it's so close but I would like to see the terminology be a bit tighter. Think about your answer before you start saying it in order to only mention the things that are important and relevant to the question. For example, in this case, the kidney comes in a bit too early for my liking. What I would have said is inject a substance which you know stays within the blood. After that, allow a period of distribution to allow it to take time to dissolve entirely and homogeneously in the blood. And after that, measure the concentration of the blood. Only after that process should you consider whether the kidney got rid of it or not and how much was got rid of the kidney. So all in all, a bit more of a structured answer would have been beneficial in this case. And it's frustrating because the candidate is so close and shows really good innovative thinking but doesn't quite hit the mark because their answer is a bit muddled and it would have been beneficial if they took a little bit more time at the start of their answer to think it through. You injected 150 milligrams of sucrose <coughs> and leave to mix over a few hours. After this, the plasma sucrose levels are 0.01 milligrams per milliliter and 10 milligrams lost due to metabolism. Work out the volume of distribution. I'll leave that up there so you can see. I'm not quite sure what the volume of distribution is is there like a mm -hmm. definition for that um the definition is the is the equation itself okay that you would uh, use so is that i guess if i'm if i'm just going to like try and break it down as a word uh the volume of distribution is kind of the amount that will need the substance will need to be spread out in um and so that would then be the um how much you've injected minus how much you've lost obviously divided by how much is left after a few hours so then you just do so uh 150 minus 1 10 minus 10 divided by 0 0.01 so that's 140 divided by 0 0.01 which is the same as 140 times by 100, which gives you 14,000. So I have to add a little caveat to this question. I think in an Oxbridge interview, they wouldn't exactly sort of give you a definition of something that is essentially circular. They wouldn't say the volume of distribution is what the equation says it is. In fact, they tend to try and push you and prompt you in a particular direction and therefore help you to get to the answer. They're your friend in this interview. They want you to succeed and therefore they wouldn't give a point blank and helpful answer like that. But regardless, this candidate does a good job of explaining what this volume of distribution means just from the wording of it. So they do a good job at dealing with that adversity in the question. Second, they do a good quick sum. So getting used to mental maths, becoming proficient and quick in it is really important for Oxbridge interviews because there's always some sort of calculation question embedded in the scenario. So becoming good at your mental maths like this candidate would be a really good start. My only complaint or little niggle with this question is that they don't finish it off by saying the units of their answer. Just finishing that off would have been a cherry on top and as well sense checking the answer. 14,000 milliliters, in other words, 14 liters, is quite a lot. The adult blood volume is about five liters. So a good follow-up question that you might expect in an Oxbridge interview is, well, the blood volume is five liters. Why is this answer 14 liters? And just thinking a bit about that being that, oh, that must mean that this sucrose is not just in the blood, but it's also gone into the fatty tissues. It's also gone into the uh, extracellular spaces, the cells themselves. All of that contributes to the volume of distribution. So just thinking a bit more broadly, sense checking your answer, it's all a good practice. 
What determines the osmolarity of blood? So osmolarity is sort of the amount of fluid relative to the amount of solute. So basically the amount of fluid will be how much water there is. Also determined by like ion concentrations and all the other things that are present in blood as solutes, so like glucose, ions, phosphate, calcium, urea, kind of all those things. Here the candidate gives a good description on what osmorality is. Now, as an aside point, you don't need to be fully aware of it, but there is a difference between osmolality with an L and osmorality with an R. Now, just try and research that on your own. But regardless, this candidate gives a good few examples of ions, of urea, of glucose, which might all contribute to this. As well, they show a good understanding of why that's important. Now, what I would have liked to have seen is a specific example. For example, why is osmorality important to the blood cells, the red blood cells? Well, they may lies and that might make it difficult for them to carry oxygen. Why is it important for brain cells? Well, if you get brain cells lysing, you're going to be quickly ending up in hot water. Those specific examples could have guided the candidate a little bit more and avoided the answer becoming a bit more vague at the end. So all in all, a bit more specific, but a good answer nonetheless.